All right, practice problems. So in the practice problems, we first start off looking at the well-posedness of this system. So I have two systems, H1 and H2. Here's the system matrices for both of those. And so here's D1, here's D2. We can go through and compute I minus D1, D2 determinant. And when we do, we get this quantity, which is not zero. And so this system is in fact well posed. We don't actually have to check the rest of the system to check that. If all we want to do is check to see if the system is well posed. Now, the system is well posed, but if we wanted to actually simulate this, for example, in Simulink, um, Simulink will not like this. It's gonna, it's gonna complain about an algebraic loop. And so it, it definitely is a problem. So what ends up happening then is you, in, in this loop, you actually have to insert a tiny delay into the system so that it breaks the algebraic loop, which is kind of a pain and actually not, does not give you exact results, but it should be, if, if, if the delay is small enough, it should be close enough. All right, example number two, I'm given the system. I notice that um, my system is unstable, and so I have that. Uh, when I plug that into XC and compute the determinant of XC, XC transpose, I can see that I get the value 144, which is not zero. Therefore, that unstable mode is controllable, and so the system is stabilizable. Okay, turns out the system is not is not controllable, but it is stabilizable. All right, so I use this generic state feedback law, that is K1 times X1, K2 times X2, K3 times X3, which I can factor out X this way. So this becomes K times X. A plus BK then is, is given by this expression, so you can see how K affects the whole system. And if I compute the characteristic polynomial of A plus BK, I get this, and it turns out I can factor out this quantity, S plus 2. This shows that we have a state feedback fixed mode, but the state feedback fixed mode is stable. Okay, So our system is not controllable, but at least the, un the uncontrollable part is stable. And then I can choose K1, K2, and K3 to, ch to pick the roots of this polynomial. Okay, so that's what we have. And so for our system, um, which is stabilizable, we can use the block triangularizing transformation for the system. So this it happens to be such a block triangularizing transformation. And when we do the transformation, this is what we get. Actually, what this transformation does is it puts the system into diagonal form, which is a kind of block triangularizing, uh, block triangular transformation. But the important thing here is that I can see that zero down there corresponds to uncontrollability, and here's my un uncontrollable mode. If we look at the other part of the system, this is diagonal, and then this is these are not zeros. This A11 bar and B1 bar are controllable. Okay, so that pair is controllable, whereas our system is not controllable. So this system is stabilizable because our unstable eigenvalue is controllable. Now, I'm going to define alpha bar C, which is these two poles, which is this polynomial. And so if I plug in alpha 1 bar bar, uh, alpha 1 bar, 1 1 bar, into this polynomial, this is the matrix I get. QC for the A, for the A11, B1 bar is this quantity, which is invertible. And so I can obtain K bar using Ackerman's formula for basically this is the controllable portion of my system. I'm basically coming up with a uh, state feedback gain for the controllable portion of my system. So here's that. Okay. And so my state feedback gain then is this and then zero times the transformation matrix. And so this is what I get. And um, so I can show that this, in fact, gives me the desired closed loop eigenvalues. But this, this is not unique. If I chose something different here, I would get a different gain. Okay, And that would, that would also still work for uh, putting the eigenvalues where I want. 
For example, three, here I have this system and I have two inputs. I want to find a state feedback gain that will place the eigenvalues here at these values. So here's my MATLAB command for that. Here's my A, B. I can use the place command. So notice I'm using minus place because I want a plus sign here. And then I set the eigenvalues to be what I want, A, B, and that. And so that gives me a K. And so this command only just shows me um, that I in fact get the eigenvalues I expect. Here's the K that gives me those eigenvalues. Now, I was told to put the eigenvalues here, but why there? What is that? Are those even good values? Well, we don't know. But if you want to find good eigenvalues for a problem like this, tune in to EE552 to see. There we talk about optimal control and how to pick the best K for a problem. So just a little plug for EE552.